Hi, I'm Jan Rothenberg and welcome to Good Karma Designs. Today we are going to learn all about Feng Shui, everything you always wanted to know. And I'm here with internationally recognized Feng Shui consultant, Michelle Luongo. And I want to just tell you a little something about Michelle. She is the founder of the East Coast Institute of Feng Shui, as well as the founder of a successful Feng Shui consulting firm, Balanced Living Inc., located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. With over a decade of experience in Feng Shui, combined with her background in interior redesign, Michelle is an expert collaborator advising real estate investors, home stagers, architects, and interior designers on this subject of Feng Shui. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Jan. It's great to be here. It is so wonderful to have you here on the set of Good Karma, creating Good Karma with Feng Shui. Absolutely. I mean, what could be better? Um, tell us a little bit on how you got into Feng Shui. Actually, probably the same way most people do. I was given a Feng Shui book as a gift, a housewarming gift on a new home. And I started reading it, and I just wanted more and more and more right. information. It's fascinating. It is. And it was really kind of a creative outlet for mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. um, and so it has evolved over the years. Um, going through all kinds of trainings and seminars and learning different aspects of, of the philosophy. So right. it's been a great journey. And I know you have a school and an institute. I do, I do. I teach a certification program for those who are interested in becoming practitioners. Mm -hmm. I do workshops and lectures. Very involved in the design community. I speak at the Dakota. Right. I've been to Miramar on the West Coast. I've been to Philadelphia. So, um, you know, the design community has really embraced feng shui. Absolutely. And as a designer, I've attended some of your workshops and lectures, and they are fascinating. And for really any interior designer to add feng shui practices Absolutely. to the toolbox, more and more people ask about it and want to do things in their homes mm -hmm. that are feng shui approved or feng shui correct. So tell us, um, I know that there are three different forms of feng shui. Yeah, yes, we call them there. schools. Mm -hmm. They're actually different methods, methods. Of, of analyzing a property. Um, the most, uh, the, the easiest actually, um, is coined the phrase Western. And basically mm -hmm. we've adapted and all of the tradition from Asia into the way we live here right. in the United States. Right, because it's a very old practice. It isn't is it? very, very like you know, going back five thousand years. That's very old. So um, ancient. That is really the easiest method to learn. Um, and then there is a compass, or it's also called classical or traditional feng shui. Mm -hmm which has uh, more of an Asian appeal to it. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one called Black Sect, which is very similar to Western. It just has a little bit more of, of intention and ceremonies and blessings um, mm. in, involved in that particular method of feng shui. So those are the three major mm -hmm. um, methods that we use here in the United States. And which one do you put across when you're teaching or you're doing a reading in somebody's home? Is there one that you favor or do you use all of them? I have had great successes with um, all of them. Uh, one is not better than the other. It is really just a preference. Mm -hmm. Um, I teach Western method, right. um, as well as uh, Compass, which will uh, come onto the schedule uh, next year. So um, I teach both of them. I love using both of them, and it really depends on the client mm -hmm. as far as which one I will use. What their needs are. What their needs are and what their preferences are. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Some people are very into Asian decor and mm -hmm. symbolism, right. then I will use the Compass method. Which is the older one, more traditional. More traditional method, yes. And the Western is more applied to West, our country. Western is more from a decorative standpoint. Uh -huh. So okay. your designers will really right. gravitate towards right. that method. That's the one that helps us. Yes, A little exactly. bit easier. Share with us when you do a consultation, what types of things can you do for homeowners and designers that are helping the homeowners? 
Um, well, first, I need to know what their intention is. They're, they're not calling me for any good reason. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to zero in on their goals and what their issues are. Right, and everybody's uh, in, different. Yes, right. absolutely. That's and right. every home is different. Right. Uh, feng Shui is not a one-size-fits-all. No. It is customized to each individual client. Mm -hmm. um, so there are so many different areas in our life that are being affected, whether it be finance, mm -hmm. whether it be relationships, right. whether it be health issues. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to want to focus on the particular issues that they're right. having. And some people have issues with their home, with clutter, with outdoor issues, and you have to take the whole project as an entity. Absolutely. Right. We start at the outside, and so many people spend don't so much time that. on their they're, interiors, they, don't think about they the forget outside. what's going on outside because all of the energy comes from the outside in. Right. So very, very important. Yes. Not to be missed. Don't overlook that Absolutely. exterior. Absolutely. Well, we'll talk more about that later, but here we have the Bagua map behind mm -hmm. us, and everybody wants to know about the Bagua. So can you tell us a little bit? Absolutely. It's the foundation. Yeah, it is the foundation, the core foundation of feng shui, mm -hmm. and every method of feng shui uses the Bagua map, mm -hmm. just in a different way. Um, the one that is behind me, this is based on the front door. This is laid on the floor plan. Which is Western. Western. Right. Okay. Correct. Based on the front door. Mm -hmm. Your compass method will use the direction. Right. So it, it's the same. But it's it depends different. where East and yes. West is. Exactly. So based on this map, can you tell us a little bit about the places in the home where the exterior correlated with the parts of our life that are affected. Yeah, it's called the eight aspirations of life and basically this Bagua map covers every single aspect of your life. And when you lay this on your floor plan and you look to the rooms that fall, let's say in the relationship area, mm -hmm. and we've got an abundance of clutter or issues going on in that room, then we can zero in and, and find out why there are issues. So it's very telltaling, uh, yes. the Bagua. It, it, we call it the magical square mm -hmm. because it's amazing mm -hmm. what you can see just when you lay this map that we call it on the, on the floor plan. Correct. And I also remember from my course with you is laying it over the entire exterior and drawing lines and finding that one space was actually missing. If the house is shaped like an L or a U, Correct. you may have a missing part. Exactly. So maybe you can tell us a the, little uh, bit The about entire that. Uh, home needs to go under, under the Bagua map. So if you have an Olanai, you have a terrace, you have a balcony, mm -hmm. you have a deck, that is part of your living space, and a lot of people overlook that. Right. Um, when we're missing areas in the Bagua, let's say you have an L-shaped home, well, then we're going to need to work outside. Mm -hmm. We're going to enhance and focus, let's just say, on your patio or your pool area um, to make up mm -hmm. for that missing part. And, the, and the, it, it's no, nothing bad. It's just a little bit more challenging that... We're going to now work outside instead of you know inside right. the home. So some extra quote cures because I remember from the course mm -hmm. to um, magnify that one area. So this is absolutely fascinating. Um, we're going to be back after the break for more with Michelle, and we will pick up right here on the area of relationships. Thank you. We'll be Hi, right I'm Jan Rothenberg, and welcome back to Good Karma Designs. We're here with Michelle Luongo feng shui expert and big question how do we create better relationships via feng shui well first of all we need to focus on being part of a couple whether it be an existing relationship mm -hmm. or whether it be a future relationship we want to look first of all to the far right corner of the uh, floor plan mm -hmm. because Which that is. represents relationship up there a correct the far upper mm -hmm. corner okay and we want to decorate in pairs 
pairs. We want to be part of a couple or we're trying right. to improve that, right. that couple relationships. So put a pair, let's say, of candlesticks. Candlesticks, two throw pillows, two books, anything. In that relationship area and of be the deliberate home or mm -hmm. of the room and be deliberate with the intention. Absolutely. Or a picture of a couple. It could, could be two statue. pictures. It could be a picture that has, let's say, two dolphins or two flowers or whatever. Okay. So you really have a wide open range on decorating on what you can do in that particular area right. of, of the home right. when it comes to relationships. And it's more the intention and the homeowner themselves has to do it. Absolutely. With um, that intention. A very big part of feng shui is why are we why am i doing this mm -hmm. what is my intention mm -hmm. and what is the outcome that i'm looking for right. very important right very important to put that out there and the other couple of areas that people always ask me about are health and wealth and abundance so any tips there that people can use absolutely when it when we talk about abundance we were looking to get the flow mm -hmm of energy towards the home. Mm -hmm. So I love using what we call chi enhancers. We're trying to draw mm -hmm. attention to this particular area of the home, whether it be a wind chime or a, uh, a water feature, to bring that water energy, that flow mm -hmm. into the home. And would be there very, be very, any special place in the home? Yeah, so that's going to be in the far left corner of okay. the home or the property. Okay, so there we have the far left corner. Mm -hmm. When it comes to health issues, uh -huh. we're, get, we're going to look to the center left-hand corner or area of the home or the east direction of the home. Okay. Um, we want to make sure we have vibrant, healthy energy, um, you know, bringing fresh plants and flowers, right. you know, into that area to kind of instill that healthy energy of wellness. Um, mm -hmm. Is, is the best, really the best way so, to, to, to work on that. Plants and things like that into mm -hmm. the area. Mm -hmm. I know like um, I was at a client's home and health was definitely an issue. And from what I know of the Bagua map, I saw nothing but clutter in that health area. And I said, thing number one, you really need to declutter this space before you do anything else because it's causing confusion. Okay, so clutter is very, very important to clearing that energy in a space. Yes, and, and I think um, the best way to do this when you're looking in at your home and what you have and your belongings mm -hmm. is do I love it? Mm -hmm. Does it reflect who I am today? Yes. Then you can make that decision whether it needs to go or stay. Right. Very and, important. And does it reflect where I'm going in life? I've had clients where things are hanging on the walls that remind them of very bad memories and things they don't want to recreate. And when we took them down and replaced them with new refreshing art, everything uplifted. So it's another element of reflecting where you're heading, um, not where you've been. Oh, ab absolutely. Um, and we can segue back into relationships mm -hmm. and keeping things in your home from past oh, relationships. Right. That's a killer. Love letters, <laughs> like all of the, you know, right. all, all of this. Ties you to the past exactly. relationship. We're looking to move forward in life. And so if right. there's anything in your home that really pulls your energy down and you don't mm -hmm. feel good when looking at that item, then it needs to go. Time to go. Absolutely. Or box it up and take it to a storage facility so that it's not in your current space if you must keep things. Absolutely. And donating things. Donating. You know, repurposing I mean. new energy to somebody else that Absolutely. would love it. A absolutely. And that's, that's good that's, fashion. That's, that's, that's good karma. <laughs> that's good karma. Yes. There you go. <laughs> we can create a lot of good karma by giving absolutely. things away to those that need them. Absolutely. I'm very big on that. And just tell us briefly about the elements, the five elements. The five elements, very important theory in, in feng shui. The Chinese believe that everything in the universe will fall under one of these elements. And it is, there is fire, earth, mm -hmm. metal, water, and wood, mm -hmm. uh, metal and wood. And so um, everything in our environment falls under one of those categories. And the goal is to create balance in the home. So we need to have all of these five, five elements in our each area of our home to create that balance. And balance is so very important. Absolutely. At the close of our show, we will show some rooms that have definite balance with five elements. 
Stay tuned for more. We'll be back right after Hi, welcome back to Good Karma Designs. And we're just finishing up with Michelle, our feng shui expert. Do you have any closing tips that our viewers can do at home for better feng shui? Absolutely. The first and the most important area is your front door. Uh-huh. Make sure that it's clean, make sure it's refreshed, make sure the door doesn't drag, there's no you know, squeaks there, the door knob opens easily, and that uh, there is a clear pathway to your front door. Mm -hmm. This is what we call the mouth of chi. This oh. is where all the energy enters your home. Very important area and a big focus to get started. And very much overlooked because often we don't think about that front door. So it should be clean, in good working shape, and easy to get to, inviting that chi into the home to create more good karma. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, they call that curb appeal yes. a lot of times within the real estate community. Absolutely. And make sure that. Uh, we can find your home. Right. You know that there is a number there, a very, very visible oh, okay. number. Make sure the doorbell works, make sure the outdoor light works. Mm -hmm. Everything needs to be functioning. Any Welcoming. Anything that is in need of repair drains our energy. So, absolutely. absolutely. So look at the front of your house as mm -hmm. the first step to better feng shui and declutter would probably be step number two absolutely. if you're going to do anything. Absolutely. That is wonderful. It has been so great to have Hello. you here today. How can our viewers find you? Well, yeah, you can uh, reach me on my website, um, balancedlivinginc.com. Um, and, you know, also you can uh, email me or you can um, call me. Wonderful. as well. Okay. Do we have your phone number? Yes, it's 954-609-2584. Wonderful. And thank you so oh, much, Michelle, welcome. for being with us here. today and helping us all create good karma in our homes. And thank you for joining us here today on Good Karma Designs. We're here every Tuesday night at 7. And may the good karma be yours.